Well, hello and welcome to Understand Men Now. I'm Jonathan Assley of JonathanAssley.com and I'm so excited to be shooting this short video for you today. Our topic, we're going to talk about what's called false familiarity. False familiarity. I'm going to do that again. <laughs> Uh, really quickly, if you're new to my YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you can be notified of new content. And if you like this video, please hit that like button at the end so more people can see that you liked it. <laughs> All right, we're going to talk about something I call false familiarity or false intimacy. Okay, so one thing I've observed in the dating realm, and this has been especially true since the invention of the Internet, is people in the dating realm are spending more time on their devices texting and messaging each other than they are spending face-to-face -face time okay they're spending a lot of time connecting through the internet in fact uh if 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 you if you look at your text messages with someone and it's just constant text messaging text messaging text messaging and you look back and you go yeah i see them once every couple weeks or i see them once a week but we're spending more time on the phone than we are or whether it's phone facetime i mean it's through an internet connectivity let me just set the stage for a moment versus real face-to-face -face, real belly to belly real time doing things together then there's a chance you might be experiencing what's known as false intimacy or what I call false familiarity. Now, false familiarity is for those people that are beginning communicating with someone they haven't met. There can be this incessant communication, communication, communication with one another, and you feel like you really know someone, okay? That's false familiarity. False intimacy is once you've established that you're seeing someone, you're spending more time on your phone than you are in person. And why this is so critically important, and, and part of this is because of the pandemic, part of it is the nature of distance. The challenge today is if two people aren't spending face-to-face -to -face time together, developing the roots to trust, the intimacy is going to be what I call false or very weak, very weak foundation. Now, Esther Perel, and I've talked about her book called Mating in Captivity. She talks about something that frequently happens, which is called stable ambiguity, stable ambiguity. What that means is people are in relationship where they're getting companionship, connection and sex. And it's stable in that they're committed to one another, but they're not really developing deeper intimacy. The ambiguous part is commitment. Commit, here, let me do that. Commitment with one another. I want you to look at why I do commitment like this. A lot of people think they're, they're in relationship of commitment like this, but do you see how easily that can come apart? Whereas when commitment's like this, it's harder to come apart because they've actually invested in developing the friendship actually invested in developing the friendship i'm just noticing my picture right there is my my two oldest mates i'm not from australia but i'm going to say mates my oldest friends and we've developed a lot of connection with one another because it's done face to face we guys don't talk on the phone and share intimate things with each other what we do is we spend time together experiencing life together doing shared activities hobbies mutual interests together that's how you develop friendship now a lot of many of you are walking you're you're walking in life on a very weak foundation very weak foundation that foundation is typically centered around i need a guy to love me for me to feel good about myself or a man i need a i need somebody to love me for me to feel good about myself in fact the number one emotional health issue is i don't feel good enough i feel unlovable i feel unlikable this is why i'm such a big proponent of self-love it's why i wrote a book called what the heck is self-love anyway by jonathan asley see the back cover if you have a copy of my book please post a comment let me know you've gotten it why this is so critically important and why this is so important to understand where we fall into this trap of false familiarity and false intimacy is that when we develop a strong relationship within ourselves when we're rooted in self-confidence, 
self-awareness, self-worth, self-reliance, self-esteem. We don't get sucked into this need for false familiarity and this false sense of intimacy. Now, I'm not suggesting that you can't have an intimate conversation with your partner via phone, but you know, on my phone, um, if, if I see more yellow than I do, in other words, if it's a lot of communication from them, on my phone, it's, it's uh, text messaging is, um, well, it's actually green, I should say. If I see a lot more green, meaning green is um, coming from them, Okay, if it's a lot more green and mine is just very shallow, in other words, very limited, then it means that, and I'm just suggesting, ladies, for you, if you're doing more of the communicating and he's doing very little, or vice versa, he's doing very little, doing a lot, and you're doing very little, it's not really developing those roots. And those roots get established when you do social activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, teamwork building, and certainly um, maybe traveling together. Teamwork building relates to helping each other in your professional life and your personal life. Doing it face to face. I want to encourage that if you want your relationship to go from being false intimacy or false familiarity to something deeper than it has to be done face to face. And this is why I'm a big proponent of establishing your standards very early on. And that standard is, what is it that you want a relationship to look like? It so fascinates me. How many women reach out to me professionally uh, in my professional capacity going, I know what I want, I know what I want, I know what I want. Then they hire me, they go through, then they go through my proprietary program and I hear this every single time. Jonathan, I wished I learned this. I wished I learned this when I was in school. I wish my parents taught me. I wished I learned this 10 years ago. Ladies, part of the reason why we're getting sucked in this trap is because commitment to one another, especially at midlife, seems so confusing. And if you want help, creating clarity. Clarity breeds confidence and confidence breeds better choices. When you want support, check out a link to a free discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. I'm gonna turn you on to so much new material. You're gonna feel so good about yourself that you don't need false intimacy to actually be in a happy relationship. All right, I'm gonna wrap up this video as I always do. First, giving myself a big gigantic Jonathan Bear hug of self-love. I'm gonna reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm gonna ask you to turn to someone or a pet or a teddy bear or a pillow and give it a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love and we can all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. <laughs>